life was really good, you know, I was really happy with where I was at and um, met a wonderful guy who I married and uh, we purchased a house out at Tanamira and um, and you know both were working in really good jobs you know we had a young family and um, yeah we, we were at a really good place I think you know but you know while that was happening I had a number of relatives you know nieces and nephews that had attended Woodard High School and they um, were telling me about you know a lot of the gangster violence that was happening um, a lot of the cultural tension uh, between the different ethnic groups and um, I started thinking about, you know, what I could possibly do to make a difference in that place. And um, I had a discussion with my husband and um, we sort of made a conscious decision that we needed to do something about it. We couldn't live our comfortable lives anymore. We needed to just, you know, um, make a commitment to that. And so um, we both um, decided to sell our house and make the move to Woodridge. We then um, approached um, the school and made an appointment to see the uh, principal and said, you know, here's my offer of help. I guess like anyone just arriving on your doorstep, which is literally sort of what Joe did, I guess we kind of thought, well, what's she on about, you know? But um, it wasn't very long before we saw her passion and commitment. Woodridge High School, um, very multicultural. There are over 50 cultural groups represented in that school. We have a population of 830 students and 30% uh, are Pacific Islander, 10% are Indigenous. We've also got a large population of African uh, refugee students from Sudan and Burundi. It's very diverse. Uh, it's also from a, a, a community that is a fairly low socio-economic area, large uh, area of unemployment and even generational unemployment and many many social issues um, that occur in the community and of course are, are brought into the school. So it's a, a complex, probably one of the most complex learning environments in Queensland. One afternoon I got a phone call from the principal and he said to me, look Joe, I need you, I need you down at the office. So I dropped everything and made it down to the office, walked through the office uh, main administration building and noticed that um, the office area had been in lockdown mode and a number of the uh, uh, administration staff were locked away in the back room there. I was in the office next door at the time and I could hear this thumping and bumping and I thought my goodness what's going on and I could hear um, chairs been thrown. The principal then informed me that we had two gang members that were fighting in his office um, and he just really didn't know how to manage it. I walked in and saw these two boys fighting and sort of said to them like you guys need to stop and they both looked at me and um, and, and they did. And um, they both sat down and I, I just said to them, you know, how dare you? How dare you represent our people like that? You know, you know well, here, there's a stereotype out there that, that says that this is exactly what we're like. And we're not like this. We're not people that fight. The power of it was that those the students at that time knew that Joe represented them and their culture and their families and their community. I think for the first time in their lives it was something that was very confronting and that was something that they really needed to hear. I noticed that they were really getting emotional um, and so here we, here we are going from boys fighting to boys literally crying and, um, and apologising to one another and hugging one another all in the span of 20 minutes. Um, and I knew then that, you know, that's where I needed to be, that I needed to be in this environment, you know, with the hard knocks and with kids fighting and just saying, look, we don't need to go down this path, we can just try and get along and you know, be happy. So there was a boy that I was working with um, had left his family uh, to live with his auntie and uncle uh, because uh, difficult circumstances and, and uh, just wanted to touch base with him every so often to see if he was okay. And uh, then one night uh, there was a fight up at, um, up at Logan Police Park. Uh, the boys had been drinking and um, another group, uh, another gang arrived and uh, they started on each other and um, this particular student 
um, made an effort to break up the fight between the two groups. Uh, unfortunately, this particular student was stabbed um, several times um, and later died uh, in hospital. I knew that I needed to step up and, and really take ownership of the situation. So I was dealing with his family and um, as well as dealing with a hundred or so grieving students who were affected by his death. Um, was a student that uh, was well known and very popular. There were a number of students from surrounding schools that were directly uh, related to the student that was killed, um, as well as uh, directly related to the students that um, uh, were the perpetrators. Um, so um, that was just, um, for me, I knew that I, I needed to connect with uh, the chaplains in those schools um, to, to really uh, make a difference in this situation. We had the family of the boy that was killed actually meet with students from schools um, and they basically said, look, we don't want our son's death uh, to be remembered as something that would start off um, other revenge attacks or you know, other killings or other um, you know, dealings of violence. Um, we want to just deal with our son's death and um, put a stop to this once and for all. And uh, that was a really good thing for chaplains, um, the chaplain see services, to really be able to work with their schools and, and feel connected, um, you know, within the situation. I, I don't think that there's any one part of the school community that hasn't been touched by Jo in the time that she's been here. What she has achieved and what she did in her time at the school can never ever be replaced. Just to know um, that that confirmation in my heart, that um, that belief that one person can make a difference in the school and realising that um, there are also other chaplains who are making um, that same difference in their own context, in their own communities, um, that is the most satisfying thing uh, for me and I am so happy to be um, in this place.